Are you Christian, by the way? No, I, I would consider myself agnostic. Agnostic, okay. Yourself? I'm also probably agnostic. Agnostic, okay. Yeah. As, so, in, as in, I, I believe there's something, right? I don't know what uh -huh. something is. Mm. And I wouldn't be willing to hedge my bets on what something Yeah, it's very interesting you say that because a lot of people these days, either you will see, they will say they're religious or they're atheist, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Normally people are religious or atheist, but agnostic, it's a, it's a very interesting position because at least you guys are open to considering, okay, is there something out there? So have you thought about this a lot yourselves? Well, my dad is very much a Catholic, mm. uh, so he's incredibly religious. Okay. So I've always had a religious... Uh, Background? Yes, I'll bring, yes, I'll bring yes, yes, yeah, very, yeah. Uh, My mum on the opposite hand is an atheist, she's mm -hmm. not religious at all, that's of course our right, she's yeah, of course. entirely allowed to believe that. Um, and I've always been more confused about religion, I'd say. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, tough to, it's, tough to, it's tough to commit to something, but it's also tough to put your hand up and say it doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you're not going to learn about religion unless yeah. you take an interest in yeah, it. Um, I like reading about, about, about a few different religions. I've read about um, Hinduism, and Christianity, of yeah. course. Uh, I've actually read two Bibles. Oh, wow. Um, but I've not, never actually read the Quran. Yeah. I mean, and you always, you always worry that people get their, their views on what Islam is from corrupt people yeah. who have certain intentions. Of course. I mean, both ends of the spectrum. You'll get some really crazy Muslims that will claim to preach the true message of yeah. Islam and then at the same time you get the other end, the left, which is, you know, very sort of, if you like, Islamophobic yeah. media who would promote another narrative and, Absolutely. you know, these guys are favoured by them anyway because they're given the news basically, Absolutely. right? What Islam tells us, your entire life is a test, you know, and the key aspect of that test is to see if you are going to be someone that can first discover that you have a creator using your faculties, your rational faculties, you know, observing the world around you. And then, once you've understood that, okay, there must be a cause, because it makes sense, okay, there's an entire universe, there's order within the universe, there's, you know, laws as scientists tell us, laws of physics, mathematics, logic. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it makes sense that there must be some sort of a cause or something behind all of this, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying it just came from nothing or created itself, right? I mean, I've always had um, the thought process. Uh -huh. to hear my no, of, of course I'll do. I'd love to know that. Because obviously, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm very much a listener. I could sit and listen to hours yeah. about your opinions on mm -hmm. the world. I've always thought that the reason I think I am somewhat interested in the thought of religion is mm -hmm. because I can absolutely 100% trust the scientific explanation of the universe around us mm -hmm. right back to the point where it was created. But like everyone else, that's where all of a sudden it falls apart because mm -hmm. what created that? Yeah. I've always thought that our universe is something that exists, it grows, it comes back, mm -hmm. it crushes, and then due to physics about how if you crush enough space in one area you'll get an explosion. Yes. It's the same thing with Big Bang does. So in yeah. my in my belief is that the universe has existed before. Mm -hmm. But even then, if you imagine that there's been a million universes before ours, what created those? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's where I've always believed. I'm, I've always thought that if there is a god, regardless of whether somebody referred to them as a Christian god or mm -hmm. Allah or the many gods of you know Hinduism and Buddhism, yeah. uh, other polytheistic religions, whoever their view of God is, there is, a, there is something that created the universe. Mm -hmm. It's just we're finding out. Yes. And you, like you said, with your rationality and your thought, what that creation is. Causes, yeah, and absolutely. Who knows? Yeah, Honestly, absolutely. Who knows? And that's the question, isn't and that's it? That's what religion is about. Religion is about faith. It's belief in yes. something. Yes. Because if you can't, if you've got nothing to believe in, what what's there yeah, to yeah. do in life? You know yeah, absolutely. I mean? But interesting, the Islamic perspective of God. Have you come across that before? No, actually, no. Okay. I only know the Islamic, you know, view of God as Allah. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. So if you've got a few minutes, I could sort of briefly... Of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely, okay. I don't mind so, so the concept of God in Islam is interesting. It's not you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't want to, I don't want to you know, take, take up your time. Yeah, another one of those conversations. No, of course, no, of course. yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to hear. Yeah, so, so, so the concept basically is what God tells Allah says in the Quran is, for example, in the 112th chapter, He says that He is God, the one and only, the absolutely eternal, right? He has no beginning, He has no end, basically. He wasn't born and He wasn't given birth to. And then God concludes the chapter by saying there's nothing like him. Right? So the concept of God in Islam is that he's of an eternal being that's unlike anything you can imagine. So we don't refer to him as a person or a man. You can't anything you conceptualize is not God. Yes. Right? He's beyond his creation. Right? So and therefore he's unlike his creation. And that sort of logic, logically makes sense as well because if this eternal being chose to create this finite effect, this physical effect, well then he can't be like it because he existed prior to it. Yes. Right? So the concept of God, God in Islam is very simple. He's eternal, he's uniquely one, meaning that he's not divisible. You can't break him into parts uh -huh. like we can physical objects. Like I could take this book, this Quran, and break it down into a million and one pieces, right? So God is unlike this because the Arabic word used is interesting as well, is Ahad. Now in Arabic, the word for one is Wahid. Normally that's used for one. 
Ahad is very unique because it's a one you can't divide or break into parts. Ah, okay. Right? So it's a very specific word that's used to refer to the Creator, uh, God. Um, so I, for, for me personally, I, when I think about that conception, I, it sort of makes sense logically as well. Um, as, as obviously spiritually and, and so on and so forth. So, but for me personally, I'll be honest, like when I, I've never been practicing, I was never interested in religion most of my life, right? But when I sort of came around to the point of just sort of looking into religions, because I had the same questions, well, what is it really all about? I have everything going well in my life, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying life, but I'm still not satisfied. It's something that's empty, you know, inside. And I started looking into religions and the conception, the concept of God in Islam, I found really interesting because it, it sort of fits into that logical mold that we have in our minds as well to a degree. Um, but at the same time it doesn't because it's beyond anything we can conceive of or imagine. If you, one thing we could tell about human nature, like humans are deeply spiritual, yes. right? And they, they, like you said, they look for definitives, right? They want answers, we want answers. That's the way we're designed, right? Yes. So that in itself is almost a gift from God. It's almost like an internal compass that we have. Uh -huh. Like I'm putting you in this world, I'm not going to show you myself to you, mm -hmm. but I've given you enough tools and faculties to be able to find me if you're honest and sincere, mm -hmm. right? So, and that's a beautiful part of the journey because we can now ex explore our, if you like, our faculties and use them, you know? And that's when humans are most happiest, when they're really exerting themselves yes. and, their, and their abilities to discover something. And I think that's a beautiful gift from God in itself, right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, God gives signs to people throughout their lives. And those come in their own sort of shapes and forms, depending on the person, their personal, and so on and so forth. So I think it's a beautiful, it's, everyone's on a journey. Yes. Everyone's on a journey. Life is a journey, right? But I think the fact that we, you know, you guys are actually looking into this still, in, a, in the world as it stands today, which is all about the material, the physical, the here and now, the YOLO mentality, if you like, right? Yes. It's a beautiful thing in itself, right? And again, it's, I mean, from an Islamic perspective, we believe God guides, you know, who He wills. I mean, we, like we're here, we're talking about Islam, we don't have the power to guide anyone. I mean, we didn't plan our meeting today, right? It may just happen, right? And you guys were interested and you came and, and, and wanted a copy. So, it's every, like I said, everyone's on a journey. It's about looking into these things, you know. And in regards to what, uh, another point I want to quickly touch upon, what you mentioned, which was that we all sort of know there's a cause. Yes. But everyone's is referring to that cause in a different way or trying to discover that cause. It's interesting that in Islam, like I said, Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he never mentioned that Islam was a new religion, right, for people or a new way of life. He always referred back, I'll get that later, it's fine. It's fine. He always referred to uh, the previous prophets and messengers. So in Islam, we learn that God has been sending messengers throughout history. Abraham, Noah, Moses, all of the prophets you'll be aware of. To, and the objective they were sent with was to remind people of the Creator and remind people of their purpose, which was to know their God and turn back to Him. Realizing they're going to die and go back to God at the end of the whole thing, right? So God's been sending messengers and the Prophet peace be upon him, is this Quran we believe is the final installment in that series of revelations. So when you read it, one thing you'll find interesting is that there's many things that are similar. You've, you would have read them already in the Bible, right? You've read them, you come across them in school, for example. Yes. And there may be some things different, but it's very interesting. So it connects all the dots. You know, for example, in, in the Quran, this way of this book is well on Jesus. Uh -huh. Most people don't know this, that Muslims believe Jesus to be one of the mightiest messengers of God. And we believe that he was sent to the children of Israel, again to do the same thing, to guide them back to the truth. Right? Moses, same thing. Noah, same thing. Abraham, the same thing. Abraham's made a lot of reference to. There's a chapter on Moses and his engagement with Pharaoh. You know, there's a chapter on the mother of Mary, um, the mother of Jesus, Mary. Whole chapter dedicated to her and how, how she was a pious woman and all of the things she went through and all of these things. So I'm sure you'll find it very interesting, you know, to read. Yes, absolutely. You know, and definitely look into it. Yeah, well, I really appreciate it. No Thank problem. You, nice to meet you guys. So your name was, sorry? Uh, yeah, Brian. What was your Brian name? Brian Imran. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet and your name? I'm Ethan. Ethan, nice to meet you, Ethan. And like, if you guys, I, I'm sure you guys don't have much time, you're probably going to return back to Scotland soon? Uh, we're here for till Saturday. Saturday, okay. Cool. If you guys want, and you're interested in more material, if you, there's a website I can give you. It may be actually in the back of this. Let me see. There's a very good website. It's called onereason.org. You guys can get more resources there, information there as well, if you're interested yeah, to read further. Of course. Where's my notes at? I always forget what it is when I need it. So what was it? Uh, one reason dot org. org. Yeah, you guys may want to take this as well. So this is more of an introduction to the Quran. So a few select verses. Yeah. Uh, Maybe a good pre-reading to the Quran itself. Although this is very easy reading to, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, well, of course. We'll take we'll take one copy. Yeah. Uh, because well, we're always around each other anyway. Yeah. So yeah. We'll be able to no problem. We'll definitely give it a read actually. Because, yeah, definitely. You know, like I said, we're re reading a lot of religious texts, trying to find out what where they're all, what you've got in common and stuff like that. Like, like you said, the fact that this shares yep. certain messengers is. It's mental, isn't it? Because yeah. so many people in their head will think, um, oh, uh -huh. you know, the, the Christian belief is this and the other belief is this. And that. But in reality, in reality, they all share. Right. Yeah. Hi, 
and they'll share common messages. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's certainly a connection there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course. Once again, thank you. Yeah, for, nice thank you for nice to meet you guys, man.